This one has it all. A book that was rejected by CGC. An act of kindness. Books from my original personal collection. And more. Let's see how these grades turned out. Hey there, today I have a CGC unboxing video, and in this video I'm going to open up 16 books that I got professionally graded by CGC that were cleaned and pressed by Palm Beach Presser. Now I talk a lot about process, I talk a lot about uh, how I acquire books and the things that I look for, but I just want to unbox this and look at the slabs. I'm excited to get this one back. Uh, I, as I mentioned, it's a nice mixture of different types of books in terms of when I acquired them and how I acquired them. So I want to get this uh, rather oversized uh, large box, 16 slabs in here. I imagine it's been shipped in the same way with their new packing materials. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and take a look. All right, looks like they're consistently using this new packing material. It is this super sturdy, uh, very, very rigid, bubble-ish mailer. So to, they kind of put it in, in two sections and put your slabs in. And as I mentioned before, it uh, makes for some interesting unboxings because you want to kind of uh, remove it from the packing material without seeing the grades, if, if that's what you're going for. Uh, but let's take a look at these grades. As always, I did not look ahead of time when I get the notification that my books are in transit. It's very tempting to go onto the CGC website and look at your grades, but I find it to be a lot more fun to wait. I know sometimes you're waiting a long time to get your books graded, but it's fun to reveal them uh, here in real time. And you will see the grades uh, just momentarily before I do. And let's get started here with the first book, uh, Sandman number 12. This is from 1990. Uh, I had come across a portion of my original collection with uh, some various books, and as I was going through and uh, trying to catalog and, and make some space uh, as far as creating some room for newer books, I was going through some of my older bins and pulled out my short box of original Sandman comics, and this was in there, and I thought this had a chance at getting a high grade. And as always, uh, Palm Beach Presser provides his estimates and grader notes. So this is Sandman number 12. And I had originally given this book a 9.4. Palm Beach noted some light wear at spine corners and said that a 9.8 is possible on Sandman number 12. And here it is. The result is a 9.8. Fantastic. Uh, this one to me has a little bit of a backstory. I had actually picked up a copy of this off of Atomic Avenue uh, and it was very, very cheap. And I think what they had noted is there's this line here uh, right on the cover that's part of the art, but if you didn't know that, it looks like the book has been scratched or smudged something on the front cover where you might actually downgrade it, but you have to be careful with uh, Dave McKeon's cover art. It's very dynamic. Uh, this one's very dark, hard to see, but there's a lot going on, but love this Doll's House Part 3, and pretty cool. My original copy of Sandman 12 getting a 9.8, so that's going to be part of the fun of this unboxing is uh, some of these books are the ones that I got from the comic shop back in the day and have held on to them all these years uh, since they were first released, so that's fun. Uh, here's another one, uh, Green Lantern, number 51 from 1994. Also another book that, I mean, I vividly remember going into my LCS and seeing this and not being the biggest DC fan when I first got into comics and slowly got into it, uh, and then really became a fan around the death of Superman storyline, the reign of Superman, and all, all of that hype that, that ran through comics at that time, and started to explore getting into uh, Batman, Wonder Woman, and Green Lantern, of course. And this was right around the time Kyle Rayner first appeared and became Green Lantern. And when I uh, ran through these and was reorganizing my collection. I had pulled this one out and graded it, and I gave it a 9.6. I thought it was a really strong high-grade copy. Uh, Palm Beach Presser has no notes other than 9.8 likely, so let's see Green Lantern number 51 from 1994 uh, getting the 9.8, and it's noted on the label the first appearance of Kyle Rayner's 
new costume. So the new Green Lantern, uh, if you will, right around the time that Hal Jordan became the villain. There's the whole Parallax storyline and so forth. And remember buying this one and holding on to it, uh, at picking up from the LCS. So it's a little bit extra special and kind of fun to see some of these original books uh, getting a 9.8. And for me personally, it's a testament to how I took care of my collection. Really happy that I was able to store them in a way that gave them a chance at getting a 9.8. Okay, the next book, another one, Green Lantern 49. This is a cover that has been homaged over the years. It's definitely a fun Hal Jordan cover. Uh, another book I picked up directly from my LCS. Uh, this book is from 1994. I had given this comic a 9.4. Also, no greater notes from Palm Beach Presser, and he noted this one is 9.8 probable. Not likely, but probable. So pretty confident, uh, more confident in this one. Let's see, uh, Green Lantern 49, and it got a 9.6. Uh, so didn't get the 9.8, and I'll give it a quick look just to see why it didn't. Um, could be a little bit of corner whitening down here. The front looks just fine. Yeah, I mean, hard for me to tell exactly why it got a 9.6. Uh, it could be, in fact, both corners, top and bottom, have a little bit of whitening on it, but really not much. But I would say under normal circumstances, maybe this does get a 9.6 or it, it is deserving of the 9.6. It's just that the grading is inconsistent and a book like this in the past has also received a 9.8 in this shape. But it could be something I'm missing here. I'm looking at the back, trying to see if there's any other folds or creases, but uh, it looks like a really nice copy, strong candidate for 9.8 still. I think if it had, you know, a ton of value or was a key or a mega grail or of some kind, I would probably just crack and resubmit it, but uh, the book is what it is. And I just take the grade and move on. Uh, 9.6 on that uh, Emerald Twilight Part 2 Green Lantern uh, 49. Again, from my original collection, that one. Uh, next is Thor God of Thunder number 13. Uh, this is from 2013. Photo covers, not something I've really been interested in, but I have been interested in the folks that really hype these as being something very special. And I do understand some of the points, uh, the nostalgia for maybe... Uh, the first few phases of the MCU or, or all of the films that really led up to uh, Avengers Endgame and that being people's favorite MCU movies and, and kind of want to rekindle a lot of that, those feelings and this nostalgia for those. So I get it and trying to collect maybe uh, the sort of original uh, photos of those original actors portraying those characters. I totally understand and get it. This one is also interesting to me because I sent this in as a 9.8 pre-screen uh, because I bought it from Mile High Comics, and I, I think I say regularly, I rarely send a book directly from Mile High in, and it gets a 9.8, and I felt like this one really was pretty strong as is, and I sent it in for a pre-screen and got rejected. I didn't get it pressed before. It was one of those where I was kind of kicking myself and I, I told myself like, just don't do that anymore. With this one, I felt like once it got rejected by CGC, it should be sent to Palm Beach Presser to see what he could do. And his notes on this one, no specific greater notes, 9.8 likely. I gave it a 9.4 just because it was rejected by CGC and I wanted to be safe with my estimate. But here we go. The movie variant cover of Thor, God of Thunder number 13 from 2013, and it finally did get the 9.8, and was really uh, pleased to find this one for the price that I paid at Mile High, and I think even through the original pre-screen rejection fee that I paid on this, the uh, pressing fee, and then the ultimately the grading fee, I still think I, I came out ahead on this one. And it really is, it's a great picture of uh, Chris Hemsworth as Thor. And the photo covers are kind of uh, coming back in popularity. They're, st they're interesting. So definitely felt like it was uh, worth sending in. Next one is Something is Killing the Children 38. This is from 2024. This is the Jenny Frizen sketch cover. Essentially, it is the, the sketch version of Erica Slaughter on the cover uh, with a red background. This was an act of kindness. My good friend, 
Kevin757, I actually interviewed him during my top 30 interview series, so definitely go check out that interview again. I know him personally, so we had uh, some extra fun during that episode, uh, just reminiscing, talking comics and so forth, so definitely go check that out. But he knew that I was on a break, and he also knew that I'm a huge Jenny Frizen fan, a big Something is Killing the Children fan, and he saw this one and, as an act of kindness, decided to pick it up on my behalf, and he mailed it to me. And I thought it was such a cool, nice gesture, just looking out for me, but also respecting my boundaries and wanting to take a break. And it was really neat. It was, it was a lot of fun to receive this as an act of kindness uh, during that time. So I decided to go ahead and turn it around and get it graded just because he decided to, to do this for me as a nice gesture. But now, because I know it's from him and he was looking out for me, and helping uh, support my comic collecting habits that it was important for me to go ahead and get this graded. So uh, I'm really hopeful that this gets a 9.8. There were no greater notes uh, from Palm Beach Presser on this one. I had given it a 9.6. I just felt like it needed that little bit of extra love and care to get it up uh, to a 9.8. And Palm Beach noted 9.8 likely on this Something is Killing the Children number 38 from 2024. And it did, in fact, get a 9.8. So, Kevin757, thank you very much. I really appreciate it, and I wanted to get this graded. So, I will definitely think of you and that gesture, that, that the kindness that you showed uh, to me. Uh, really awesome, really cool book. So, thank you, Palm Beach Presser. Thank you, CGC. Thank you, Kevin757. And really go check out that interview. It was, it was a lot of fun for us. All right, there we go. Next up is... Spider Gwen, Ghost Spider from 2024 as well. Another Jenny Frizen book. This one was one of the last books that I purchased before I took my break. This was a retailer incentive. I just felt like with Frizen and a lot of her big ratios, 1 in 50, 1 in 100, 1 in 200s, uh, a lot like Art Germ, I almost want to chase down every single one, and a lot of times they're hard to find. This one I ended up tracking down from Bird City Comics and bought from them directly. And sometimes I recommend if uh, your go-to stores or your LCS doesn't have one, just try a simple Google search uh, and be creative with your search terms to try and find those Shopify stores or other online comic stores. A lot of the stores that you think exclusively have retailer exclusives and, and that's kind of what they deal in sometimes they throw up incentives as well and so it's worth searching around and checking it out uh, this one I did feel when I received it it wasn't quite a 9-8 candidate by itself and I wanted to make sure that you know it was in good hands and I wanted to max out the grade because I am a prison collector but also a retailer incentive collector where she's provided the cover art. So this one is from 2024, uh, the Frizen Virgin Edition. I had given this a 9.6. Uh, Palm Beach Presser said, very light wear at top spine corner, 9.8 probable. And let's see what CGC ultimately gave the book. And it got a 9.8. Thank you all around. Super cool and absolutely love it. Uh, such a gorgeous cover here of Spider Gwen. And what's nice about these full art variants is then when you get it slabbed, you've got the label, the whole package there. And honestly, uh, I really don't want to see Spider Gwen up here in the trade or a reduction of the art because it's gorgeous. Uh, so very, very cool. Very happy to get this one back. And now I can display it next to my act of kindness here, my other prison cover. Awesome. All right, so far so good. Next one, New X-Men number 128. This is from 2002. Love this Jean Grey cover. Uh, love the Grant Morrison New X-Men run. It's where we were first introduced into Cassandra Nova, uh, and she was terrifying as a villain throughout that storyline. There are no greater notes on this. He says 9.8 probable. Uh, now, the last 9.8 probable was that Green Lantern 49. They got the 9.6, but let's see. New X-Men 128 from 2002, and it did get the 9.8. And then looking at the book, there's definite wear, almost like just very, very minor spine splitting uh, along the, particularly the bottom edge of the spine and some corner wear. You know, if I'm comparing it to that Green Lantern 49, probably looks about the same condition-wise. 
Not only is this a great Jean Grey cover, but you also have the first appearance of Phantom X on this book. So thank you very much for securing the 9.8 on that one, Palm Beach Presser. Appreciate that. Next one is Sandman 32, back to a book in my original collection. Uh, this book is not the greatest cover. I think just gathering the various storylines of Sandman and as Sandman season two returns to Netflix and we start to see those storylines explored, it's almost like a limited series within the greater Sandman ongoing series. And I really love that they just kept going and kept numbering the books. And I'm just an old school collector in that way. Uh, I didn't want to have uh, 18 different limited series of Sandman. Uh, this one is very easy to find. Usually it's like, I don't want to say it's dollar bin fodder, but certainly, you know, a few bucks here and there is typically what you can get this book for. I have a number of uh, copies and my original one was in the best shape out of all of them. And I wanted to send this in and go ahead and try and get the 9.8 on Sandman 32. I had originally graded this one as a 9.4 and needing a press. Palm Beach says there's some light spine corner wear at the top, but a 9.8 is probable. And let's see what grade it got, and it got a 9.8. All right, very cool. And, and really, it's just me being a completionist and wanting to have a, as many issues of Sandman in a 9.8, so it's almost just like a checklist type of item. But just like I had mentioned on Sandman 12, the Dave McKeon cover art, you have to be careful. There's a lot of stuff happening, but there's a couple of lines on this one too that go straight across the book. It's just part of the art and you have to be careful, like particularly right in here of you, there's a, there's a white line that goes across. It is part of his art style. And so just be on the lookout for some of these. Uh, you might catch some of these for a lot less because uh, somebody might have graded that book incorrectly. All right, next up is Fantastic Four 348. It's from 1991. This is a newsstand copy of uh, Fantastic Four 348 featuring the new Fantastic Four Incredible Hulk, Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Ghost Rider, arguably the four popular characters, although really Hulk is kind of filling in for the thing in that role. But you got Spider-Man, Ghost Rider, Wolverine, the 90s, Art Adams, uh, really uh, <laughs> popular for all of those reasons. And also a fun book to find and pick up. And this one, in full disclosure, was getting this from Atomic Avenue for a couple of bucks and ended up buying um, three or four issues from the same seller. And on Atomic Avenue, they typically don't distinguish between direct and newsstand. And so sometimes you can ask for a scan or roll the dice and kind of see if you are hunting newsstand editions. Sometimes those can sneak in, particularly on these uh, books where the directs aren't worth a whole lot, but maybe the newsstand has some upside. And this was one of those cases I, I bought uh, several copies in a lot. And as I was going through the order, I uh, just noticed that this one's a newsstand. Let me check out the value. And there was some value and it was in good shape. Palm Beach Presser took a look at this one and assessed it and said there's a small spot stain near Spider-Man's web hand. So I'll check that out. Uh, I had given this a 9.4. Palm Beach noted that uh, a 9.8 is possible on this newsstand edition of Fantastic Four 348 and CGC also agreed with Palm Beach Presser and gave it a 9.8. Uh, I definitely see the, the dot by the hand. Last time there was also a notable stain that uh, kind of got past CGC or maybe they're letting it go or allowing it, but really cool to get this one uh, newsstand in a 9.8. And like I said, I was not specifically hunting this in a newsstand. Uh, it just so happened that the seller sent it to me with the other direct copies that I had ordered. But a lot of fun here uh, with Art Adams, not only doing the cover, also doing the interiors on a, a few copies here of Fantastic Four with arguably Marvel's four most popular characters. So very cool. And I'm trying to bury that 9.6 back there so we don't see it because... Uh, uh, definitely on a roll with these 9.8s, and let's keep it going. Fantastic Four, number 13. Speaking of Art Adams, this is a 2024 variant by Art Adams featuring Galactus. This was another one that I held on to because I had given it a 9.4. It is a 1 in 25, and just didn't feel like I could send it in for a pre-screen, even though it was released this year. 
and just wanted to have Palm Beach Presser take a look at it for me. So many of these modern Art Adams incentives are just popping off in value. And you could make the case, like, when you think about incentives that are put out with Jenny Frizen cover art, Art Germ cover art, Art Adams is right up there. A number of his have really kind of taken off in value. And so uh, anytime I see a great Art Adams retailer incentive cover, I want to try and track it down and uh, love this one. So this one, I had given a 9.4. Palm Beach Presser has no greater notes on this one. It says 9.8 probable. And let's see if CGC agreed with that. And they did, and it got the 9.8. And like the title says, this is fantastic. So there it is. Really nice Art Adams incentive here on Fantastic Four 13, getting a 9.8. Put it right next to the other Adams book. That's awesome. Really happy I waited and sent that one in for pressing instead of sending it in just for the pre-screen. All right, about six more to go. The next one up is Electra Assassin number one. This is from 1986. I feel like referencing collector auctions because I know he and I were felt like we were alternating unboxings where we were showing this book and how much we love like the Frank Miller Bill Sienkiewicz collaboration and maybe this is not as popular a series as a lot of Frank Miller's or even Sienkiewicz's limited series are and this got produced under the Marvel Epic Comics label because they wanted to tell their own story in more of an independent style. And to me, this is such a very, very cool Sienkiewicz cover. He did all the covers and the interior art for this entire series that was written by Miller. And I was scooping this up as often as I could. Uh, to me, this was my best copy at 9.6. Palm Beach Presser provided no notes other than a 9.8 probable. And CGC gave this all-white cover of Electra Assassin number one a 9.8. I think my only regret is that I didn't include this when I got my other books signed by Frank Miller when he was there for the Wolverine signing. Probably should have timed it better to also get this one signed. A lot of space for his signature on this one. It would have worked out anywhere over here to get the FM line all the way across. But uh, super cool, super happy to get uh, Electra... Uh, the, the first issue of this eight-issue limited series back in a 9.8. All right, great work so far. The next one, Spider-Gwen, the Ghost Spider, number one, 2024. This is the regular Jenny Frizen cover, and you can see there it is, the trade that goes across Gwen's forehead. And I love Frizen and love the art on this one, but... Uh, man, love the full art version so much more than this. But even this one, as an open order variant cover, had some value in a 9.8. And I'd ordered a number of these copies right before my break, where I had shifted from let me get one copy of everything to let me get multiple copies of just the books that I really want to collect and the covers that I really love. I had given it a 9.6 needing a press. Palm Beach Presser said very light wear at the top spine corner, a 9.8 probable and CGC gave it a 9.8. Uh, so part of my thinking is I may not need to keep both of these, the, the full art. I was hedging my bets a little bit just in case the full art one didn't come back as a 9.8. That way I would have a, a Frizen uh, cover copy in a 9.8. So either I'll hold on th to this one in case Frizen has a signature series event coming up and possibly send it in, or I could always move on from this one and maybe kind of reimburse myself for my investment in the full art copy. Either way, love getting this one. Any Frizen books in a 9.8 is awesome. Love that. And it's always fun to take in a pre-order for an open order book where that open order book uh, pops a little bit and you see some actual transactions and sales occur and there's a little bit of upside to getting that book graded. Really nice to get that one back in a 9.8 as it probably wouldn't have much value if it wasn't. Here is Star Wars number nine. This is from 1978, and I, I don't want to say I'm going to start my run of getting a, a full set of the original Star Wars Marvel series graded. However, it sort of feels like I'm doing that anyway. It's kind of like when I say I'm not a Conan collector, and then I've got a few issues of Conan in, in every unboxing. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. The original Star Wars comic series was a little before my time. To me, it felt like it was just an unattainable set of comics. 
And the values have kind of gone up and down over the years. They were overlooked. They were actually shunned and not really considered canon or, or uh, really all that interesting. And then recently it's come back around and there's been a lot of acceptance of uh, the original Star Wars series. So just going through and collecting as many of the raw books that I can and, and some of the keys even and then trying to figure out, you know, then as I have several copies of a particular issue, try to find the best one and see uh, what we can do to send it in for grading. Uh, this one I had actually given a 9.2, but I thought it had some potential. No greater notes on this one, so this is exciting, a 9.8 probable. Well, let's see, Star Wars number 9 from 1978, and CGC gave it a 9.2. Wow, okay. So let me take a look. Uh, very odd looking at the book and that's wild i mean there is a a dog ear at the bottom that broke color uh the back looks super nice i mean if i'm just looking at the back cover uh it looks like a 9.8 all day long it looks really really nice but i think they punished this one just for this bottom right corner that had a, a little bit of a, a color break down in here i'm really shocked to see this one go all the way uh from what we thought was a 9.8 after Palm Beach took care of it uh, down to a 9.2. But uh, yeah, that's a bummer. Uh, this one, uh, very typical of CGC not to put any real notes of significance unless it's a major, major character first appearance. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, the first appearance of the Cloud Riders. Cloud Riders appeared in the Solo movie, uh, and there's no mention of Cloud Riders here on the label just of some general uh, character appearances in a Star Wars pinup by Howard Chaikin. So that's too bad, 9.2 on this one. So now of course, I'll probably be obsessed with finding a higher grade copy to send in, but we move on to the next book and it is Star Wars 98. Uh, this is from 1985. This is the newsstand edition, as you can see the barcode. This one I gave a 9.4, uh, Palm Beach did have greater notes on this one, light wear at spine corners, and he did say 9.8 probable. Uh, let's see if we can recover and get a better grade than a 9.2 on this one, and CGC and everybody involved did recover on this nicely to get the 9.8 white pages. And I thought this was fun because it is a painted cover by Bill Sienkiewicz. You know, you don't think necessarily Star Wars when you think of Sienkiewicz. I always think of Electra Assassin, New Mutants, particularly this style that he developed when he joined New Mutants, where he kind of went from his Neil Adams style into this whole new direction that I think a lot of people remember Sienkiewicz for specifically. But just a tremendous cover artist over the years and a lot of fun to get him on a Star Wars book. And so there it is, Star Wars 98, the newsstand copy, uh, getting a 9.8. So that's better. And I'm going to cover that 9.2 as if it never happened. All right, the next book is Spider-Man versus Wolverine number one. This is from 1987. This is the newsstand edition. And if you've watched some of my unboxings in the past or probably future unboxings as well, I have talked about this book and I don't really know if it's like a right place, right time, right moment, right age as a comic book collector. This is my original copy. This is the book that I picked up off of the spinner rack. Uh, after I reveal the grade, I'm going to check and see if it has that little crease right by the, the price box that if you can imagine the, the spinner rack and how the books would kind of fold over as, as you're kind of looking through the books. For whatever reason, just the creators... The characters, the story, the, the double-sized issue. I mean, this was a book that meant a lot to me, and it was a very specific comic that I took a lot of places. And, you know, as a kid, you're, you're looking for things when the world starts to get big and confusing. Uh, you're looking for things of comfort. You're looking for things to kind of hold on to. And my comics, for me, were one of those things. And this was one of those comics in a very short list that really meant a lot to me. And anytime I would take a trip in the car or had to stay over somewhere, um, this was a book that I grabbed out of my bin and I put in my backpack and I took with me. So this book means a lot to me. It means a lot that uh, Palm Beach was able to work on it. Frankly, I don't care about the grade. I just wanted to preserve it and maximize the condition as best everybody could in the process. 
I had given this originally a 9.0, so I just felt like after all these years and all the times I read through this, uh, you could definitely argue this was my reader copy, but uh, right off the newsstand into my hands as a kid and now uh, preserved and encased by CGC, uh, I'd given it a 9.0. Palm Beach noted a number of defects, not surprised, light wear at spine corners with color loss, color rub on the back cover at the reader's edge, light color breaks at the back spine. He did estimate, even with all of those things, a 9.6 slash 9.4, and CGC decided to grade it a 9.6. And I think that's a very fitting grade, actually a very surprising grade, uh, for as much as this book was handled to get a 9.6. Uh, one of the other books on the same list for me is Amazing Spider-Man 300. Uh, it was right there. I can almost picture them stacked on top of each other, where I was taking them everywhere. And oddly enough, or appropriately enough, it also got a 9.6, so now I have matching grades on those two books from my childhood that meant so much to me. And yep, there it is, right by the price box is that crease that I remember looking at it going, man, that's exactly where people would pull it down on the spinner rack, and actually I'm glad it's still there. So I can see that. Uh, it's really the only crease on the book. Uh, everything else is kind of as Ron described. It's pretty much just color loss on the back. It's an all-purple cover, so you can kind of see any dings. There's definitely some stressing towards the staples that are still there. But I don't care. I love it. Thank you, Palm Beach Presser, for taking care of this book for me. And thank you, CGC, for giving it a high grade. And now I have my childhood copy of Spider-Man vs. Wolverine number 1 in a 9.6, the newsstand edition. Love it. That's awesome. All right, one more to go, and uh, I'll make it quick. We've got Sandman 58 from 1994. This was a book that I had also picked out from my original collection as I was trying to complete a full run of Sandman. Thought this was in high grade. Kind of the same story, just building out a full set of Sandman comics as I love the story, love the series. Palm Beach noted light wear at the bottom spine corner with color loss on this one. I had given it a 9.4 and thought it just needed a little bit of help uh, and, and attention to get it to a 9.8 and CGC also gave it the 9.8 on this one so very good very happy to get this one in a 9.8 as well to hopefully continue on the journey of collecting all the as many books I guess in the Sandman series as possible and that's it that's a, a, a pretty nice 16 book submission most of them getting 9.8s Thank you, Palm Beach Presser, once again for spending the time and working on my books. I, I truly appreciate it. Palm Beach Presser, you can check them out at palmbeachpresser.com. Does great work. I uh, can't recommend him enough for not just working on your books, but, but trusting him with your uh, prized possessions as I have. I mean, I'm sending him books from my childhood. Uh, that's, it's a one of one. It's a unique copy. And uh, pretty cool that uh, this is a really nice assortment of books that uh, hopefully I won't get too emotional about, but just thinking about from my original collection, one of my all-time favorite books, a one in a hundred retailer incentive, and of course the act of kindness from Kevin757, just a, a pretty special and, and neat collection of comics and not for me just your ordinary CGC unboxing. So a, a really, really fun submission there, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, happy collecting, and see you next time.